Hi everyone, I'm Chong Qingyi and today we're going to have a revision for Form 4 Biology Chapter 10, Transport in Human and Animals. For multicellular organisms such as amphibians, mammals and birds, we have circulatory systems which can be divided into two types, the open circulatory system and the closed circulatory system. For open circulatory systems, we have the hemolymph, which is a blood-like nutrition liquid that can flow directly into the body cavity, which is known as hemocell, and buff the cells. As you can see in this diagram, for open circulatory system, we have an open-ended vessel. Whereas for closed circulatory systems, the blood is always contained in a continuous closed blood vessel and is distributed to the whole body. So you can see from this diagram, the blood vessels are always closed. Okay. Next, from this table, we can see that the insects have the open circulatory systems where the heart of insect, they will pump the hemolymph to the hemocell continuously to buff the body cells for the exchange of waste materials and the exchange of nutrients. Whereas for closed circulatory system, we have fish that consist of two chambers and the amphibians and humans that consist of double circulatory system. Next, for the similarities, both of them are found in all multicellular organisms and they have the heart to pump the blood or hemolymph. The circulatory system also functions to transport nutrients such as oxygen, as well as the waste like carbon dioxide. And the heart has a valve to ensure that the blood flows in one direction. Next, the differences between the circulatory system of organisms are shown in this diagram. Okay, we can see for amphibians, they have closed blood circulatory system and it consists of two atria and one ventricle. However, the closed circulatory system are incomplete because some oxygenated blood are mixed with the deoxygenated blood in the ventricle. And then for humans, we have a complete double circulatory system because our oxygenated blood are separated with the deoxygenated blood in the ventricle. Next, we are going to look at the circulatory system of humans. First and foremost, let us look at the structure of heart. Okay, the human's heart consists of four chambers, which are two atria and also two ventricles. So you can look at this diagram. It is obvious that the muscular wall of left ventricle is thicker compared to the right ventricle. This is because the left ventricle they need to generate a greater pressure to pump the blood out of the heart okay, through aorta. Okay, that's why they need to have a thicker muscular wall because they need to withstand a higher pressure when they pump the blood out of the heart okay, through aorta to the whole body. Okay. Next will be our composition of human blood. The human blood consists of plasma, okay, which is made up of 55% out of the blood volume. The Plasma consists of bottle, plasma proteins, solutes, hormones, and also the enzymes. Whereas the erythrocyte, which is also known as red blood cell, they were made up 45% of the blood volume. The erythrocyte that has no nucleus and it has a biconcave shape, it consists of a red pigment known as hemoglobin. Okay? The hemoglobin will bind with the oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin. And the oxyhemoglobin will release oxygen to the body cells when the partial pressure of oxygen is low. Next, the leukocytes, which is also known as white blood cell, they has a nucleus and they has irregular shape. Their function is to fight pathogen. Okay, and also platelets. Okay, platelets is an important component where they will help in our blood clotting. Okay, blood clotting. There are three types of blood vessel. Okay, one is the artery where they will transport the blood out of our heart. And next, we have the capillary, where the blood capillary is only one cell thick. And this is the place where a change of gases occurs between the blood and between the uh, body cells. Next, we have the vein. Okay? The function of vein is to carry the deoxygenated blood back to our heart. Okay? 
So this table has shown us the characteristics of artery, capillaries, and the vein. So you can see for artery, it has a very thick muscular wall because they need to withstand the high pressure of the blood, okay? When the blood is transported from the heart to the entire body, okay? Whereas for capillary, it is only one cell thick and there is no wall in blood capillary. Whereas for vein, okay, vein it has a less muscular and less elastic wall. It consists of a valve okay, to ensure that the blood only flows in one direction. And also the blood pressure is very low. It will transport the blood from whole body back to the heart. 10.3 Mechanism of Heartbeat the human's heart is made up of cardiac muscle, which is myogenic, which means that it will contract and relax without receiving the nerve impulse from the human nervous systems. Okay. However, the mechanism of heartbeat is actually coordinated and initiated by the pacemaker. So the pacemaker here is the sinoatrial node SA. So first and foremost, they will first generate an electrical impulses and the electrical impulses will spread rapidly in both the atrial, causing the atrial to contract simultaneously. As a result, the contraction of atrial will help to pump the blood into the ventricle. At the same time, the electrical impulses is now reached at reach the atrial ventricular node, and it will further spread through the bundle of his, the Purkinje fibers, and the apex of the heart. As the electrical impulses spread from apex of the heart to the whole ventricular wall, okay, the ventricles will contract to pump the blood out of the heart okay, to the lungs and to the body. And this cycle, this mechanism of heartbeat will repeat every day. During the heart pumping, the lap dap sound can be heard. Okay, lap dap, lap dap. Okay. So why this occurs is because the first lap sound is produced when tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valve close, okay? Especially when the when it's the contraction of the ventricles, okay? The contraction of ventricles where the tricuspid valve and bicuspid valve will close. So this is where the lap sound occurs. And the second lap sound occurs is produced when the seminular valve close. 10.4 mechanism of blood clotting. As we have mentioned earlier, the platelets in blood is very important for the blood clotting. So the mechanism of blood clotting take place okay, when the coagulated platelet, okay, the damaged cells and the clotting factors in the blood plasma, they will form an active vector known as thrombotinase and it will work together with the calcium ions and vitamin K to convert the prothrombin, which is an inactive plasma protein to thrombin. Okay? Thrombin is an active plasma protein that acts as an enzyme. So the thrombin, they will catalyze the conversion of fibrinogen, okay, the soluble fibrinogen to an insoluble fibrin. Okay. The fibrin is an insoluble tract-like protein fiber. They will form a network on the wound surface to trap the erythrocyte, or in other words, to stop the bleeding of your wound. Okay. So the health issues related to the blood clotting are hemophilia, okay, which is the lack of certain clotting factors in the blood and it may cause excessive bleeding due to the small wounds. Next, we also have thrombosis, which is the formation of blood clots, okay, known as thrombos. The third health issues related to blood clotting is embolism, which is the lodging of an embolus inside a blood vessel. 10.5 blood groups of human. There are four blood groups of humans, which are blood group A, blood group B, blood group AB, as well as blood group O. So during a blood transfusion, it is important to ensure that the blood group of donor and the blood group of recipient are compatible so that agglutination or coagulation won't occur for the recipient. Okay, so diagram below shows the antigen and antibody in different blood groups. For example, for blood group A, we have the antigen A and the antibody, antib. For blood group B, we have antigen on red 
blood cell, which is antigen B, and then the antibody in the blood serum is anti A. So, uh, let's say if a blood group A donor wants to donate the blood to blood group B recipient, so what happens is the agglutination will occur, and the severe condition is it may cause death to the recipient. Because for the recipient that has blood group B, okay, it consists of antibody, NTA. Hence, if the, antibody, the NTA, they will clump together with antigen A present in blood group A. And this will cause agglutination. Okay? So, blood group A, B, okay, they can receive blood group from all blood groups, okay? That's why the blood group AB is also known as universal recipient, whereas for the blood group O, they are known as universal donor because they can donate blood to all blood groups due to the characteristics, okay? The blood group O does not have any antigen on the red blood cell. Hence, they will not, uh, the agglutination will not happen between blood group O and other blood group. That's why the blood group O is known as the universal donor. It can donate blood to blood group A, B, AB, and also O. Okay, next move on to the research factor. Okay, another antigen also found on surface of the red blood cell, which is known as the research factor. And the red blood cell of an individual with the research factor or antigen D, they are known as RH positive, research positive. Whereas an individual that does not possess the research factor or antigen D, they are known as research negative. So this is a um, disease related with research factor, the erythroblastosis vitalis. Okay, this will occur um, between the research negative mother when she marries a research positive father. Okay. And this condition mostly will occur for the second child, okay, the second fetus, because the anti D antibodies that are present in the research negative models, okay, the blood may cross the placenta and destroy the red blood cell of the research positive fetus. Okay, but luckily, luckily, this problem now it can be addressed by treating the affected mother with anti research globulin. 10.6, the health issues related to the human circulatory systems. We have atherosclerosis, which is the formation and deposition of plaque on the artery walls. The atherosclerosis is also the early stage of arteriosclerosis. Okay, next we have hypertension, which is caused by the restricted blood flow and the severe chest pain, which is also known as angina, and the myocardial infraction, which is known as heart attack. 10.7, human lymphatic systems that happens due to the presence of artery, blood capillary, and also the vein. So first and foremost, the blood that reaches the arterial end of the blood capillary has a high pressure due to the difference in diameter. As you can see, for the artery, it has a larger diameter compared to the blood capillary, which is only one cell thick. Okay? And due to the blood okay, that is flow from the pumping force of the heart, okay, this pressure will allow the blood plasma to diffuse continuously from the blood capillaries into the intracellular space. Okay? And now, the blood plasma that occupies the intracellular space and constantly bath the cell is now known as tissue fluid. Okay? But remember, the tissue fluid does not contain any erythrocyte, platelets, and also plasma protein because they are too large to diffuse out of the blood capillaries. Okay. As the tissue fluid is constantly above the body cells, there will happen, what will happen is the exchange of material, okay, where the nutrients and oxygen will diffuse from the tissue fluid to body cells. At the same time, okay, the excretory products such as carbon dioxide, okay, they will diffuse out from the body cells into the blood capillaries through the tissue fluid. And now why you can see the deoxygenated blood is now at the low pressure, they will flow into the vein. 
Next is the health issues related to the human lymphatic system. For example, we have pregnancy, okay, which is caused by the body will produce more body fluid to fulfill the needs of a growing fetus, or maybe it's caused by deficiency in plasma protein, as well as the parasitic infection. Okay, so that's all about chapter 10, okay, transport in human and animals. Okay, so hope to see you guys next time. That's all from me. Thank you.